Hey folks, and welcome back to Slash Feeds the Beast. Got some sulfur goo laying on the floor like I always do because these darn torches. Pick it up anyway. Here's what we have since last time. Obviously set up a little pressure plate system with the door there. The roof is uh, temporary. <laughs> <laughs> Ultimately, I'd like to try and do some sort of dome with glass uh, up there, especially since you can do micro blocks with the glass. I think that uh, something cool could happen there, but I need some time to plan that out. I'm not very good with 3D shapes, uh, like spheres and domes, uh, just winging it. So I want to try and graph that out at some point. So I just put a layer of dirt on there to keep the mobs from falling in. But here we are. We have an arboretum. We have trees that are planted. We have some that apparently turn to sand here because of the trees growing. I thought it only did that underneath the tree. So I'm confused where these came from. But that's all right. And then these, I planted these manually on the humus. For some reason, the arboretum was not placing them, and I don't know why. But here's the setup that I've got now. The humus, I just placed uh, these stone half slabs in line with those and lit things up so that uh, no mobs would spawn. I have a the, my sterling engine, my trusty sterling engine is down here to provide power via these conductive pipes. One goes to the arboretum and then I've got places for hooking up two more things. But we're also going to go ahead and replace this Sterling engine with something a little bit more powerful. We're going to craft another one of these magmatic engines, like what I have back here, that powers the pulverizer. Uh, uh, frame rate is dying. Thank you. There you go, game. I appreciate you waking up and deciding to behave for me. Uh, but... The, let's see, we need to, oh my gosh. Oh, by the way, that reminds me, and before I forget, if you're having problems with the game crashing since going to 8.1.1, in the options, there's a place for advanced options. And, oops, if you put this in as an additional Java command line option, it'll increase the amount of memory available for permanent objects uh in java it's a whole technical thing i could bore you with but essentially it gives it more room to store things so that the game doesn't crash because it runs out of memory when my game was crashing i didn't even know it was running out of memory it just was crashing and uh i didn't know what was going on with it but let's see uh oh first thing I wanted to talk about in terms of our crafting experience here is the idea of a plan with the project table. You make a plan by just taking a blank piece of paper and uh, crafting it together with a bit of indigo dye, which you have to get from the proper type of flower. And once you have a blank plan, you can drop it in here and then put your recipe in here. So this is the recipe for a piston. Right, and then click this button and it writes the plan. So now there's a piston plan here. So just to show you how the plan works, now I collect all of this stuff, put it down here in the inventory. When I drop the plan in, it automatically fills this recipe in for me. And because this stuff's available in the inventory, I could just craft it. And it'll highlight in red the stuff that I don't have enough of so that I can just leave that, go get some materials, come back, plop it in, satisfy the recipe. And because there's a um, inventory right here, you could just keep your plans in there. Convenient. Let's see. Next, I need some Invar. Oh, you know what? That was dumb of me. I have this down here. I have everything that I need down here. So, I need Invar ingots. I made Invar gears, which are just ingots 4x4 four four diamond pattern around an iron nugget. Redstone transmission coil is redstone, redstone, uh, silver in a diagonal formation. Kind of like the gold for the redstone 
power coil, I think it was. We'll bring up the pocket crafting table for this. And you craft it very similar to any other type of engine, like so. Instead of glass, it's the redstone transition coil. Magmatic engine. All right, very good. Uh, did I take the... No, I didn't take the uh, lever with me. Okay. So we'll put that there. All right, next. We're going to, before we even power that on, we're going to place a couple more things down. Tree tap and logger. The logger is kind of expensive. That requires uh, diamantine tubes, whereas the Arboretum had required gold ones. And it takes five diamonds to make four of those, and then three of them went into this. So we'll put the logger there. And that's actually not the best configuration because I need to be able to pipe out of the side of that. But that's fine. We'll just knock this out for piping out of the side. And we'll get to that here in a second. Uh, and then the tree tamp is for the rubber trees. That will make sure that the rubber trees have all of their rubber removed before the tree is cut down, which is what the logger does in case that wasn't obvious. All right, very good. So we have all of our equipment in place. Next thing that we need, just going to go ahead and pick this up with everything that's in it. So, uh, we're going to start just with these cobblestone transport pipes, and I'm going to see if that works or not. Uh, we're actually going to go this way. No, you know what? We'll do this a little bit different. All right, we're just going to go cobblestone here to here because out of the top of the logger should pipe any saplings that drop in its logging area and we want to feed those right back into the arboretum then out the side this is why i wanted to go back up because out the side we want to collect the logs but the way that we had things set up, that was going to mix with the cobblestone transport pipe. So what we will do is we'll grab a couple of smooth stone and a glass. And we'll make ourselves a stone transport pipe. Which is essentially the same thing as a cobblestone transport pipe, but they won't connect. Now you may have noticed another type of pipe in my inventory. That is a diamond transport pipe. And it does filtering. We might get to that here in a bit if we need it. So we're going to go there, there, and then here. And then we'll put the chest down there. So out the side will be uh, apples. I'm hoping uh, we will have... Sap or not saplings. Saplings coming out the top. I'm hoping the rubber will come out the side, but I'm not exactly sure how that works. I think one video I had watched of somebody else setting something like this up, the rubber was resin was coming out the top for some reason. So we're going to just have to monitor it when we turn it on. And then the, we want the logs to actually end up in here. And in case the resin is coming out here and we need to filter it we're going to replace this with a diamond pipe and i'll show you the interface just in case we don't get to it the interface for a diamond pipe is pretty cool you place it and then you see how we've got different colors on it if i right click on it now i can place things in these rows and it will filter it so when a sapling comes up and is heading over here i want that to go to yellow you know, I want resin to go to blue, for instance. So, now this might cause a problem here, but maybe it'll bounce back. If we end up having to do it that way. But we're going to try this first and see if we can get away without the diamond pipe. Because I can find other uses for those. Alright, the only thing that's left is to power this up. So let's get our lava in here. It is powered on. Sending energy. Our tree tap is now going. 
Very good. Let's watch the logger here. Also sort of keep our eyes open around us to see if we see any signs of trees getting chopped down. Oh, okay, there goes a resin. So that is a problem. So we're gonna have to do the diamond pipe. Oh, there goes a log. That went out the side like it's supposed to. I'm gonna do diamond pipe there. Oops, not there. And we're going to put the resin in blue. There we go. And it just puts a copy in there. We're still hanging on to that. This resin, for some reason, is flying all over the place. Okay, now the logs are trying to go back that way. Oh, this is a disaster. All right, hold on. Let's break all the pipes. Nothing ever goes simply. All right, let's use just the cobblestone transport pipes. Let's go up one before we get to here. Then we can go like that. We'll go over a couple there. Put this here. All right, so that'll filter in there. Now the resin is going that way, probably as will saplings, but we can redo the sapling connection. We'll do a stone pipe there and then there. Oops, shift click instead. Excellent. Here we want the resin to continue along the blue path. But the saplings, we need to go yellow. So saplings yellow, resin, oops, resin blue. Just left click it to clear. All right, now that's gonna pop out when it gets down there because the Arboretum's not gonna accept it. And we picked it up. Very good. Let's just load these back in here manually like that. Thank you. All right, resin going that way. Sapling going that way, excellent. And here you can see the tree that's getting cut down. Now at some point this, just like some of the other sand here, will actually get replaced by humus from the Arboretum's inventory. That's why we started 40 here and we're down to 26 already. Oh, went to 25 just as I was exiting and now that's been replaced. Excellent. Uh, okay, the saplings are dropping and going into here. That went that way. Let's go ahead and put that in there, see if it plants it. It does. Fantastic. So now we have an essentially fully automated rubber and log harvesting system. We just keep it fed with lava, and we are good to go. Oh, that should get picked up, hopefully, by the logger. Let's see if it does. Yep, there it went. Now it should pop out of the, come up the pipe. There it goes, comes over. All right. We have a working automated tree farm system. And how are we doing for resin over here? 26. Fantastic. I'll just drop these logs in here for now. All right. Well, uh, that's that working. Rubber tree's getting cut down now. I'm going to let this go. We're going to take a commercial break. And uh, when we come back, we're going to look into crafting a couple of tools that we need. So stick around. All right. And we're back. And I'm a bit of a doof. Uh, I forgot that the logs aren't going to come out of the top with the sticky resin. And apples are also coming out the top, by the way. But the logs come out the side. I was wondering, where are my logs? So what I have to do is I have to take that out again. Let's pick this up. Oh, 
And we will run standard stone up from the side into the side like that. And here come the logs. I already added a filter for an apple because it had dropped and the rubber tree sapling so that they go over that way. I'm not 100% convinced that it's planting the rubber tree saplings for me. I, I know I had seen the Arboretum do it once before when I was clearing all this out. I had originally placed the Arboretum, uh, I think, here. And the problem with that was, whoa, hello tree, was that it brought the humus right up here against the walls. So the trees weren't going to have much luck growing because they need the extra space for the leaves, right? So I moved it forward and cleared out some additional space and then uh, actually put the walls in as they should be. I need to replace these because so, this is part of the foundation of the original building. But uh, yeah, I think we've got a fully working system now. We've got a whole bunch of rubber wood, regular wood in here. A bunch of resin that we'll be able to cook up. That's chugging away. So, I'm happy. Let's move on to the next project. Come here, you. So, I have not had a whole lot of luck trying to get the various requirements, specifically the um, magma creams, that's what they're called. Sorry, I was drawing a blank there for a moment. But the magma creams, I've not had much success getting magma creams for our blast furnace that we need for steel. But I did find in a village off in that direction, I checked the blacksmith. Oops, that's the wrong chest. And what do you know? But I found one block of steel. That is nine ingots right there. Now, you can't do this with it. We're used to iron blocks, gold blocks, diamond blocks. You just pop it in a crafting area and it pops out nine of whatever. That is not the way that it works in Feed the Beast, I'm afraid. What we must do is we must smelt it. So we are going to smelt it, like so. And as long as we're smelting things, I'm going to load the hopper up with some of the stuff that's in here. Like our resin. And I'm going to go ahead and pull out this sand as well. Although I've got plenty of glass. doesn't hurt to have some more on hand. Oh, so that smelting is done. So now we have nine steel ingots over in this chest. Fantastic. And we need them, too, because we've got a couple of tools that we want to craft. First thing that we're going to create is an electric wrench. Now, this is easier in vanilla industrial craft, in stock industrial craft, I guess I should say. I think it's just a regular wrench with an electric circuit and a battery attached to it. But I believe Greg Tech, and we all love Greg, has set it up to be this way, where it's going to require four steel ingots, a redstone battery, and an electric cir electronic circuit like that. So we're going to go ahead and get one of those puppies crafted. This is tin, yes? No. This is tin. We need four of these. I said four. Thank you. We need one and two of these flying all over the place uh, we're going to need do I have any cable already I do I'm gonna need to make tons more so we are going to need to do this do, 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 do. that gets us our battery then we're going to need refined iron I believe I have one ready yes we're going to need to make Oh, I hope I have that rubber is already cooking down here. Nope, it's, of course, the sand. Let's pop that out of here. Have the rubber cook. The next thing that I think we need to make 
beyond this is we need to make an extractor. In fact, I think I'm just going to let this make two, and then I'm going to swap it back on again. An extractor is a device that runs off of industrial craft power, so it would need to be powered from the geothermal generator. But uh, it will get you three rubber from one resin. Clearly superior to the one per rate that we get out of just cooking with stuff. So we're going to go that route. All right, we've got our rubber. I need three copper. I think there might be some of the weird copper in here. Or did I use it already? Looks like I used it already. When I say weird copper, I mean not this shade, but the sort of duller shade. Because copper comes from a couple of different mods in the mod pack, and they've done a pretty decent job of um, getting things unified, is the word I'm looking for. But uh, occasionally you still run into problems. All right, so we got that. Oops, we got this, we got this. And we got four of our precious steel gives us an electric wrench. Now, what's useful about an electric wrench, let's see, I think if I hold right click and press M, yes, lossless wrench mode enabled. What that means is when I decide that I want to pick up this geothermal generator when it's all done, we're going to charge this puppy up here like we do in a, a jetpack. But when I decide I want to pick it up, if I don't want it to break, if I want a guarantee that it's not going to break, I need to use this electric wrench to do it. And it will use some of the most, probably, of the charge in the electric wrench whenever I go to pick it up. And it looks like the timing is about right. This frisesium is just here so that I can shift click things into the top half. I was having a problem where I would try to shift click my jetpack in and it would click into this area and that was annoying so I just put something in here that's not really a factor all right this is still got about half a charge on it so we're gonna let that go and we'll put the wrench away in my equipment box up here and make our final item of the video which is Da, 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 da. A mining drill. One of these puppies right here. Now, I would like to make a diamond drill, ultimately, for a couple of reasons. One, it's just better to use as a tool. And secondly, because it's also a, a crafting ingredient in the quarry. But that requires a regular mining drill, ultimately, and some titanium which is ridiculous to try and get a hold of so we're just gonna go with this for now and there's our recipe five steel ingots in a formation like that i think it's refined iron without greg tech electronic circuit re battery so we need to make a couple more of those one two three four one two uh i guess we're gonna have to smelt up Six more of these just to get us going. What happened to the sticks that I had down here? You are not in here, cow. Beat it. Uh, there's the six that I had in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve. Two sticks per item in case you didn't know. Oh, I clicked that fuel thing by accident. Oop. If you click here, it gives you all the different recipes. And I accidentally clicked there with my fuel. Alright, so that's going. I'm gonna need a couple more of these. Give me. Where'd you go? Oh, you're actually over here. And do I have any more refined iron, or am I gonna have to cook some? Looks like I don't have any hanging out in there. If I have any hanging out in here, I can filter on it. Uh, I think double click. Yeah, re. There we go. One refined iron. In case you missed it, I'll, I'll say it again real quick. Double click in the box, changes it to yellow, and then you can filter your inventory 
based on that. So when I was looking for refined, it highlighted it very handily for me. And it still shows up over here in a search then too. But you can double click it to turn that off so that it's not making everything dark. I guess is <laughs> if that annoys you. Come on, there we go. All right, where are we at? I needed this stuff, and I needed three copper. One, two, three. All right, let's make some stuff. We need a battery, which is made. Oh, we need to make wire first. Ah, shoot! I need. Okay, good. I have one extra. We will get this. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom. Battery. Uh, we need the cable next for the circuit. Circuit goes like this. Then we have a circuit, a battery, and voila, mining drill. <laughs> Meet the dentist. <laughs> That's funny. So the mining drill is essentially a pickaxe that doesn't break. Um, and I guess it would qualify as a diamond, or not a diamond pickaxe, obviously. Probably like an iron pickaxe. I think you can mine everything other than obsidian. But it doesn't break, it charges instead. So we might take this for a quick spin once it's done charging. Uh, da -da 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 -da. But yeah, the uh, titanium, that's that's going to be interesting to try to obtain because titanium ingots, you either need to f be lucky and find a block of titanium like I did with the steel or somehow get the, the nuggets. And I don't know. Yeah, you'd have to find them in the wild somehow. Uh, or you'll need an industrial blast furnace with titanium dust. Titanium dust, which you would get from either scrap boxes if you're lucky, and if you've already got a UU matter making thing to make scrap boxes, then you probably don't need titanium dust all that much. Uh, where was the other one? Oh, tiny pile of titanium dust, which you get from electrolyzing bauxite. That is the only real source. Or centrifuging a titanium comb, but I'm not really into the bee thing. So this is the route that I'm going to end up having to take. I'm going to have to find lots of bauxite, make an industrial electro electrolyzer, uh, and just go to town because there's two here. There, You need four per single dust. I need... Uh, two ingots, so I need two dust, so I'm going to need eight tiny piles, which is four times this, which means I need 48 bauxite just to get started, and I have not found any bauxite. I might be in the wrong biome for that. I'm probably going to have to look that up. Oh, this is actually fully done. But, uh, let's go give this a whirl. We don't have any bad guys actually in here, do we? No. But... There we go. Just like a pickaxe. Except instead it's... Hmm, that's odd. Somehow it has increased in charge. I don't know how that happened. Seems kind of glitchy. Is that actually going up in charge? 9700. Oops. Well, now I can stand up here. Maybe. So 9,700 to 9,600. No, I guess not. I don't know where it was. Hmm. Weird. All right, well, I'll fill those in with stone brick off camera, but that's going to do it for this episode. We got a mining drill going. We got our automatic logger, which has run out of lava. But has, in its run, gotten us almost two stacks of oak, 
15 rubber wood, 4 apples, and it is patently refusing to plant these rubber tree saplings for some reason. I do not know why, but if I pull them out and plant them manually, uh, anywhere, I guess, I'll go here and here, they'll eventually grow on their own, I think, as long as the oak trees around them don't grow first. Yeah, all right, that's it. Sorry, got distracted, but uh, we're doing pretty good. We got the, I was trying to say that we got the Arboretum logger thing going over there. We got a mining drill in our inventory now. We have an electric wrench up top that now that this is, oh, that's not fully, hold on a second. I must be losing my mind. Now that seems more fully charged than it was before. I'm going crazy. So much feed the beast. Ah, see you next time. <laughs>